I often talk about how critical real ear measurement is to ensure that your hearing aids get programmed properly. But there are some situations where real ear measurement won't get you that perfect fitting. So in this video, I'm going to cover a few of these situations where real ear measurement doesn't work as well as it should. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, consider hitting the subscribe button. Real ear measurement is the only way to ensure that your hearing aids are programmed appropriately to your hearing loss prescription. And if you don't have real ear measurement performed at your fitting appointment, essentially programming the hearing aid is complete guesswork. And if you're anything like me, you like to know rather than to guess. If you aren't yet familiar with real ear measurement, and what it is and how it works, I highly recommend that you watch my video that I will link in the card up here and in the description below because it is the single most important thing that you need to understand when being fit with hearing aids. As important as real ear measurement is, there are some situations where real ear measurement alone won't get you that perfect fitting. And I want to share a quick story with you about when I was an audiology extern. There was a patient who called up the clinic and wanted some adjustments done on his hearing aids. When he came in, I was the only one available to see him. And when I hooked him up to the equipment, I noticed that he wasn't meeting his prescriptive target. So I was thinking, well, this is easy. I'm just going to increase the amplification in his right ear that was significantly below his prescriptive targets. He'll be hearing better. He'll be on his way and he'll be extremely happy. Well, that's not exactly how it occurred. It had turned out that this patient had a mass stoidectomy done on his right ear. As I proceeded to increase the amount of amplification in the right ear, he actually told me that he was feeling a little sick to his stomach. So I continued to make some more adjustments to get him up to his prescription and he stopped me again saying he really needed to go to the restroom. So I got up and I started to unhook him from the reeler measurement equipment and he ended up throwing up all over the office. You see, what had actually happened was I was increasing the volume too much on this ear that he had surgery on and it actually created a situation situation where he got a vestibular reaction that made him instantly dizzy and nauseous. Obviously in this scenario, using real ear measurement to hit his prescriptive targets was a bad idea. While getting to those targets might have given him more audibility and better speech understanding, if it causes someone to get dizzy and sick and to throw up when they start hearing sound at that level, you can't keep them at their prescription. But a mastoidectomy isn't the only situation where real ear measurement might not achieve the best results. A lot of different conductive hearing losses can actually make these targets unreachable. Some of these are, of course, including mastoidectomies, which I talked about before, but ossicular chain discontinuity, otosclerosis, ruptured eardrum, or even a cholesteatoma. Here is an actual screenshot of an audiogram for a patient with otosclerosis. The gap that you see indicates a conductive hearing loss. This is a screenshot of real ear measurement done on this patient. The purple hash mark line is the NAL NL2 prescription for this individual's hearing loss. The solid purple line is the amplification coming out of the hearing aid. Ideally, these lines would overlap, indicating that the prescription for amplification has been met by the hearing aid. As we can see, these lines are not overlapping. This was as close as I could reach the targets and still have the volume be comfortable for this patient. If I were to force the solid line to overlap with the prescriptive hash mark line, it would have been intolerable by the patient. This patient may adapt to more amplification over time, but will likely never achieve the full prescription for their hearing loss. Not being able to reach prescriptive targets is a common occurrence for individuals with a conductive hearing loss, but it can also occur in individuals who have hyperacusis. Individuals with hyperacusis are overly sensitive to certain sounds, typically sounds that aren't loud to individuals with normal hearing, but they find them to be uncomfortable. And what happens in this situation is that you might have certain targets that you need to reach in order to give them full audibility to sound, but by getting them all the way up to that target, it's completely intolerable to them as well. You would essentially have no choice but to reduce the amplification away from the prescriptive target line and send them home without this full audibility. Essentially, there's a trade-off that happens where you're trying to give them as much audibility as possible, but you're also trying to keep it comfortable for them. Another situation that can cause the inability to reach a prescriptive target is a first-time hearing aid user. 
First time hearing aid users typically come from a long period of time of auditory deprivation where their auditory nerve and their auditory cortex are not perceiving sound at the full level. And when you start giving them amplification back all the way up to their prescriptive targets, they might not be able to handle that amount of volume. The best approach to handle this situation is to actually get them all the way up to their prescriptive target and then back down the amplification away from that prescriptive target. This way you know that the hearing aids have the capability of reaching that prescription, but you don't want to give it all to them at the very first fitting. What will essentially happen is as time goes by and they adapt to that level of sound, you can kind of baby step that amplification back up into their prescription. And by the time you're done with that fitting process, you typically have that individual all the way up to their prescription so they have full audibility and they still have comfort. Now I wanna make sure something's really clear. Just because there's situations where real ear measurement and reaching prescriptive targets isn't possible, it doesn't mean that real ear measurement shouldn't be completed. Real ear measurement will still give you an idea of where the amplification is inside of your ears to see how far away you are from your prescription. If you're away from your prescription, you know you're not gonna be hearing your best. If you're on your prescription, you know that you are gonna be hearing your best. But unless you perform it, you have no clue where your hearing aids are actually programmed. Programmed at. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.